Hey everybody, Mark Edward Lewis here from cinemasound.com. Today we're going to be going and diving even deeper into the comparison between Adobe Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve from Blackmagic. Today we're going to be looking at their parametric EQs, comparing and contrasting them, and seeing which one works best for post-production. Let's roll. All right, so I've done something that we probably shouldn't do. We brought up uh, DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere Pro at the same time. It's probably not something y'all ought to be doing, but just for demonstration purposes only, here's what we're going to do. So I've got some uh, dialogue here, same picture from my phone, a little lav here. Here's what it sounds like. A Lavalier from Ceramonic that plugs right into my phone via lightning on my iPhone. And it should sound quite a bit better uh, than the regular microphone that we were using on the phone itself. Now here I'm using a... So you kind of get the idea. That's what it sounds like. So for us here in Adobe Premiere Pro, actually, let's say, let's look at DaVinci here. We'll go here. Here I'm using a lavalier from Ceramonic. Same kind of thing. So what we're going to do is instantiate the EQ. Now up here, and this is a really great addition to Resolve, is the ability to order finally, thank God, the plugins versus the effects versus the, the dynamic plugin that's built in. Thank God. And we can finally put this in a way where it's EQ first, dynamics next, and then uh, the effects rather than how it used to be, which was this way. Effects first, then EQ, then dynamics, which was like, guys, come on. Nobody does that. EDF, here we go. So then we're going to double click on the EQ. And, you know, this is the really good sounding Fairlight algorithms that we've loved for 20, 30, 40 years. Well, 30 years anyway. Um, and uh, just to give you kind of a rundown, here's obviously the graphic representation of it here. Now here I'm using... And you've got four different equalizer types that are sort of um, uh, modeled after the various uh, EQs that Fairlight has. But notice earth, air, ice. But then when we get to fire, we get Q factors here on these bands. Notice here we don't have these Q bands. And that's a problem for us in post-production because we want to have the maximum. Right now, this only means we have two full bands of true parametric EQ. Here we don't. So we definitely want to put it on the fire, even though that changes the sound a little bit. Um, and we have the ability on these outside bands to have a high cut, low cut, high shelf, low shelf. Uh, and the same over here on the high band here, which is pretty cool. That frees us up to do other things here with these bands. We can do the bell curve. We can do notching and then shelves as well uh, with, with uh, all of these, which is cool. But I wanted to show you something. We're going to instantiate band one. And what's great about Fairlight is that they give you, the, they're very analog oriented. And this is what an analog low cut would look like. It would have a nice cut on it and then a little bump here. And that sounds very natural to people. So here's, listen to the low frequencies. You're probably gonna wanna listen on headphones here. A lavalier from Ceramonic that plugs right into my phone. But now I'm gonna cut everything below 85 Hertz, which is pretty reasonable for a basso voice. By uh, lightning on my iPhone. And it should sound quite a bit better uh, than the regular microphone. Now here I'm using a Off. lavalier from Ceramonic that plugs right into my phone via lightning on my on. iPhone. And it should sound quite a bit better. And you'll notice there's low frequency boosting happening while I'm cutting the low frequencies. And that's because of the analog nature of the Fairlight uh, EQ, which is cool, especially if you're doing music. But when we're doing posts, we don't want anything like that. We want to have uh, absolute control. And this also doesn't give us any control over the cutting. It's uh, just this kind of general cut, whatever. You get what you get. Um, and then over here on the bell curves, we'll select bell. You know, this is great. We can have low, mid-low, mid-high, high frequencies. Uh, the boost and the cuts, pretty great. And then the cue's nice. Uh, then the regular microphone that we were using on the phone itself. Now, here's me. Now, here I'm using a lav... It's a little cumbersome to have to switch between different uh, frequency sections, but this is very old school, and a lot of folks like that, which is cool. Uh, unfortunately, you can't double-click to type in something. You have to kind of go like this and move the knobs around. And if you've got a stylus like I do, that's kind of a pain. We have the same thing here when we're doing the high cut, um, but it's a little less so because of the frequencies and the high frequencies. You don't have those those big bumps, but definitely Valier works. from Ceramonic that plugs right into my phone via lightning on my... So, I mean, it's useful, right? And you can do four bands of EQ, which is pretty, pretty great and full parametric, and that's cool. Let's look at Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro, we're going to go to the channel that this is on. We're going to instantiate EQ. One of the things we don't like currently about Premiere Pro is that it doesn't open up the parameters for it. When you select, you have to double click. 
Now let's take a look here. The lavalier from Ceremonic. Now right away you notice we actually have a frequency graph that's happening here, which is super, super helpful. We can see in some cases where the bad and problem frequencies are. It plugs right into my phone. But now we have the high pass filter here. There's a 40 hertz. Uh, let's make it 85. But notice there's no analog bump here, which although is not as natural, it's great for post-production. And I can control the curve and make it draconian or subtle, which is really, really important. By uh, lightning on my iPhone. And it should sound quite a bit better uh, than the regular microphone that we were using on the phone itself. Now here I'm using a... Now nothing is getting there and there's no low frequency boost. It's the same for the low pass filter here. You get to select the decibels per octave in reduction, which is great. And then we have a shelf and a shelf. So this is a high pass, sorry, a high frequency shelf. Lavalier from Ceremonic, the plug. So if you want to just add sibilance, you can. Just has a built-in shelf. Just right into my phone via lightning. Or add some overall lows now that you've cut off the low frequencies that are not human. On my iPhone. And it should sound quite a bit better uh, than the... And we're not boosting anything we don't want because we've cut it off here. We've got some nice high frequencies and a nice loudness contour shows up with some very simple motion. The regular microphone that we were using on the phone. It's now, while you can do this in... The the DaVinci Resolve version. We can have this as a shelf and then bring this down just like so. We don't really have that much control over this. This isn't really a shelf as much as it is. I tell you what, let's do the cut. This is a little more reasonable. We do the cut. We're going to do the shelf. We have the cut up here. We'll do the shelf here. Um, boost this like so. Be careful of the cool, the Q factor. iPhone, and it should sound quite a bit better. Which is pretty nice. Self. Um, oh, we got the high frequency. I forgot. Here we go. Bring this down. Uh, than the regular microphone that we were using on the phone itself. Now here's me. Now here I'm using a. Now you can hear this sounds a little more natural, a little bit, but this. Now here I'm using a lavalier. It gives me far more control. And now I have five bands of parametric EQ that I can use. Five bands. Over here, I've got two left. And if there were problems, like here, you can see this issue around a one and a half kilohertz. Let's go over there and solve it. From Ceremonic that plugs right into my phone via lightning. Gross. Here's another one that's probably around 3K. That's actually pretty close to where on I'm on my iPhone. And it should sound quite a bit better uh, than the regular microphone that we were using on the phone itself. And this is probably way too much bass frequencies. We'll pull it down. Now here I'm using... There's another weird thing happening at around 400 hertz. I can double click, type 450. A lavalier from Ceremonic that plugs right into my phone via lightning on my iPhone. And I've got two more bands I can use, y'all. Whereas over here, I'd be limited to two bands, and then I can't instantiate another EQ here. I'd have to go into the plugin list and pull up, you know, they don't have another EQ for us here. We'd have to use channel EQ, which, you know, vocal channel, which gives us this, another couple of wacky bands that really are not at a professional grade, what we would need for post. Whereas here, I've got all the elements I need, plus one other thing. I can push this to 20 or 20 decibels, uh, attenuation or you know um, boosting but here i can do 48 to 48 more than double the capability if we really need to get powerful with it so that's the difference um between these eqs you know it's pretty different y'all so as you can see there's some pretty significant differences between these two platforms and how they use parametric eq from routing to bands and even just general sound so which one is best? Well, I, I mean, I love the Fairlight sound, but I would much rather be using the parametric EQ in Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, I look forward to seeing you at cinemasound.com and we've got hundreds and hundreds of articles to help you get it right with your sound in post-production and while you're there on set. And of course, subscribe here at the YouTube channel where we have hundreds and hundreds of videos to give you that same incredible immersive experience for your audience and knowing how to do that without increasing your budget. Until then, we'll see you in post. Even if you're